This thing right here is dangerous. It's a giant V-ship that appears in your world after you've defeated the Wall of Flesh. So here's what a fresh world looks like after you've created it, and here's what it looks like after the Wall of Flesh is dead. And there it is, the giant prophesized V-ship. So this V-ship is corruption and it will try very hard to infect your world. And in this video, we're gonna be looking at how quickly it infects everything around it. So let's take a look at how much the corruption will spread after one day in hard mode. So day one in hard mode, this is how much the corruption spreads. Did you see it? Probably not, so let's zoom in and see it again. So this is before and this is after. So it doesn't look like much. One in-game Terraria day, which is 24 minutes by the way, the corruption only spreads by a few blocks in all directions. And admittedly, it's not a big deal for the first few hours of hard mode gameplay. But if you keep leaving it and keep leaving it, it will begin to snowball and that's why corruption spreads spread creeps up on you. It doesn't seem too bad at the start, but then all of a sudden, oh no, the world is engulfed in corruption. And then you've got to spend a very long time fixing it. So we're going to keep going and there's some cool facts to find out during this video, so make sure you watch until the end. Let's look at day 5 now. So this is day one again, and this is day five. Ah, so it's starting to spread quite a bit now. Now, remember day five is still very early on in hard mode. You'll probably just mine a few ores, kill a few monsters, craft a couple weapons, and by the time you've done that, the corruption and hollowed biomes have gotten noticeably larger. So it's starting to heat up now. It's gonna be interesting to see where it's at on day 100. Also, let's take a look at the corruption biome because this is still spreading as well as this giant v-shape so the corruption looked like this on day one and now on day five it looks like this so it spread quite a lot and the reason why the corruption is spreading so fast is because there's more surface area there's lots of ebonstone blocks already there so when hard mode starts the corruption is free to start spreading rapidly and quickly so if you have two corruption biomes in your world that's two more areas where the corruption is going to be rapidly spreading so keep that in mind when you are starting hard mode have you blocked off the corruption have you cleansed it? Do you want to cleanse it? Because if you don't, the corruption will start to spread rapidly. So maybe think about buying the contaminator and blast it across your world if you want to contain the corruption spread. Did you know that when you smash a demon altar, a random block in your world will convert to either corruption or hollowed? This means that if you smash like 20 demon altars, there's 20 extra sources of corruption and hollowed spread, meaning that over time it's going to spread more quickly. Now, this can be problematic if the random blocks appear in a quarantined area. For example, in my world, this area is completely safe, but if a random block over here is converted, it will wreak havoc on this area that was safe beforehand. So yeah, if you go around smashing lots of demon altars your world may corrupt faster so make sure to stay on top of cleansing your world so here's day one again and here's day 10 quite a lot of spread happening now and interestingly let's zoom into the top corner here where the corruption meets the jungle look at this the corruption is starting to eat up the mud blocks by turning them into corruption dirt blocks and the corruption slowly converting the jungle into corruption this is quite problematic but the jungle can also fight back against the corruption with chlorophyll Ore. This green ore can appear in the jungle in hard mode and when it does it can make blocks around it turn into mud blocks. So the jungle can fight back fortunately but yeah definitely pay attention to whether the corruption is spreading into your jungle in your terraria world because we don't want the jungle to get eaten up by the corruption. So here's day 1 again and here's day 25. So if we move around the world now at day 25, we can see that a lot of the world has managed to avoid the corruption, but it does appear that the center of our world is soon going to be covered in the hollowed and corruption biome. It's going to be interesting to see what happens when the corruption and hollowed collide. Will that happen in 75 more days? Well, let's take a look at day 50. Day 50, the corruption and hollowed are now starting to become a respectable size. That is a large biome. Now 50 days of terraria time is about 25 hours so that is a long time but you can expect to spend at least that much time in hard mode and most likely way more if this is your main world. So it's clear that management of corruption and hollowed is needed if you don't want it being in a sizable portion of your world. If we head over to where the corruption biome is the corruption is slowly but surely heading down the world. So potentially the corruption may go on to infect the entire right side of the 
world if enough time passes. Day 75, so the corruption and hollowed biomes have now met together and I imagine they're now battling it out for superiority. So now that they've met, I think it stays the same now because they can't convert each other into different blocks. Now let's take a look at how many corruption and hollowed blocks are in our world compared to day one. So on day one, when hard mode started, there was a total of 95,264 ebonstone blocks and 28,079 pearlstone blocks. Now over here on day 75, there's 77,913 pearlstone blocks and 218,023 ebonstone blocks. It's a really big relief that items such as the Clentaminator exist because imagine trying to cleanse your world block by block. It would take years. And here's day 100. So yeah, in the centre of our world we have all of the underground covered in hollowed and corruption. So interestingly, each terraria world can have natural barriers that spawn by chance. So if we go over to here, there's a lot of empty space in winding caverns and because of this there's not much room for growth, meaning the spread is a lot slower. It may take a very long time for the corruption to slowly spread through tiny crevices all the way down to here, so it does appear that the corruption and hollowed is slower the further away you get from the centre of the world for that reason. I mean, to get over to the right hand side of the dungeon, it would have to spread down and then right and then back out again. It would probably take something like 100 hours or something silly like that. If we take a look at the underground jungle, I think the reason why it stopped spreading the corruption in its tracks is of course the chlorophyte ore. So if we zoom in and take a look at the areas next to the corruption, there's a lot of chlorophyte ore which is fighting back against the corruption. So that's nice, thank you very much Mr. Chlorophyte ore. Let's take a look around this world. So all of this used to be the normal biome and take a look at this. So here is time sped up and we can see the corruption spreading, but also the corruption is being replaced by dirt sometimes and I don't see any chlorophyte blocks in the immediate area so maybe the jungle has the ability to fight back against the corruption anyway. I don't know to be honest that's quite an interesting development. I think for a future video we'll see what happens if you leave a terraria world for a very long time to see how it ends up and then we can answer that question. So make sure you are subscribed for that. So 100 days of terraria is less than 50 hours but it's enough time for your world to be ravished by the corruption. So definitely plan early on how you're going to keep the corruption from spreading everywhere. So I am back to YouTube after a one year break and I keep disappearing but this time I want to be back for good. I have a lot of good ideas planned, video ideas, channel ideas, so stay tuned for that, follow me on Twitter to stay up to date with everything and to make sure to like the video if you want to see more awesome Terraria videos. I shall see you friends later.